Hey guys, I'm Alan with Edge Autosport and today we're going to be installing this BNR S4 Turbo on this 2013 Mazda Speed 3 behind me. Luckily, the owner of this Mazda Speed has planned ahead and already has an HTP 3.5 inch intake on the car. He also has an upgraded top mount intercooler and downpipe as well as a three port boost control solenoid. So all we have to do today is install this Bosch 3 bar map sensor, the harness, and replace the coupler on the intake in order to get this turbo in the car. The BNR S4 is a great turbo for the Mazda Speed 3 and 6. It retains the low end torque and gives you a lot of top end power as well. And it's capable of 400 wheel horsepower, which is more than enough for the stock block Mazda Speed 3. Enough talking about the turbo, let's get it in the car. These are the tools we use to get the BNR S4 installed on this Mazda Speed 3. As you can see, we've got a variety of wrenches. We've got these flex, these flex head wrenches. They make getting into tight spots a lot easier. These stubby wrenches are great for getting the, the nuts off of the turbo to downpipe flange. It's a very tight spot. 14 millimeter gets the stock one off. 15 millimeter puts the new copper crush nut on and it will save the day when you're trying to get into that tight spot. We've also got a variety of extensions, long, short, quarter inch, three eighths, half. It just helps to have a variety because there's some really tight spots and it makes it a lot easier when you can get to them. Of course, we also have the three eighths, half and quarter inch socket wrenches as well as sockets and again, a variety uh, everything from eight millimeter up to 15 millimeter. And then you're gonna need some pliers as well to get hose clamps apart. And it certainly helps to have some clamps for those hoses in order to avoid getting coolant in your face whenever you're taking the coolant lines off the turbo. This will keep the coolant in the lines and keep it from spilling out. We got some screwdrivers over here. This makes getting some of the lines some of the coolant lines off makes it a little bit easier. Also reaching some of the clamps uh, that have like a Phillips uh, connection, a Phillips head on them, uh, it's gonna make it a lot easier. And then finally, you're gonna wanna get some penetrant. Uh, you'll wanna spray down the manifold and downpipe nuts really good before you take them off, preferably while the car is warm still, and that'll make it a lot easier and keep you from stripping things out. And make sure you have some anti-seize for all the studs and nuts surrounding the turbo. Uh, this is gonna make it a lot easier on you if you have to take it apart in the future. All right guys, to start, we're gonna work from the top down. We gotta get the intercooler off. And to do that, we have to get the shroud to access the three brackets that bolt the intercooler down. And then we've got a couple of couplers and this hose that is connected to the blow-off valve. Once those are apart, the intercooler should come right off. Now that we've got the top mount intercooler off, I'm gonna get the intake off. And to do that, we need to unplug the MAF sensor. We're gonna get the crankcase ventilation line disconnected. We're gonna go ahead and remove this coupler here and then disconnect the intake down at the turbo. 
and then we should be able to snake it right out. Luckily, this customer also has an HTP 51R battery tray, which should make this job a lot easier. All right, now that we got the intake out of the way, we are going to get this harness moved so that we can get the intercooler bracket off. And then we'll have access to the heat shield for the turbo manifold. Once we get that off, we'll have access to the turbo manifold and downpipe. We can get those separate from the turbo and out of the way. And then the turbo will be ready to come out. There's another heat shield underneath the manifold that's a little bit more difficult to get to. It has three eight millimeter bolts, but you get those out and it just slides right past the manifold. All right, now that we got all the brackets and everything out of the way, we're gonna start working on the downpipe. We're gonna get a couple of the bolts disconnected up top. Then we're gonna lift the car and go underneath. And that way the down, downpipe will just slide off to the side and we can get to the turbo bracket underneath and then when we're ready to get the manifold out, the turbo will be able to drop down enough to give clearance for the manifold. All right guys, we're under the car. We're working on the lower downpipe nuts. They are very difficult to get to. You've got one right here, and then you've got one right over here, and you're pretty much limited to using an open-end wrench on those due to their location and, and how close they are to the, to the downpipe, but uh, I definitely recommend spraying them with some penetrant so you can make it easier on you in the long run. And also while we're under here, we're going to get the bracket for the turbo off as well as the oil return line and the coolant return line so that we can get this turbo out. All right, so we've got the bottom of the turbo uh, is loose now. Uh, the bracket is unbolted, the oil return line is disconnected, and now we're gonna get some of the lines disconnected from up here. On the first turbo that I ever installed on a Mazda Speed, I ended up with coolant all in my buddy's face because we did not clamp lines and so you learn from your mistakes. All right, so we got the lines disconnected from the turbo, boost controller and all that stuff. 
Now we're gonna disconnect the oil feed line and the down pipe, and then we'll start working on the exhaust manifold. For the map sensor, we have the stock map sensor fitting right in here. You can't really see it. It's behind these, uh, this part of the wiring harness. What we're going to do is we're going to pull that off. It's got one bolt holding it in, it's sealed with an O-ring. We're going to put the new map sensor in, and then the harness plugs into the, the new map sensor and then plugs into the factory harness. And so it's just an adapter, save you from having to splice a bunch of wires. All right, well, we got the stock KO4 out of the car and we got the BNRS4 sitting here and we're about to transfer everything over because you reuse the oil return line, the oil feed line, which is still in the car, uh, the coolant feed line. You're gonna, you get a new coolant return line with the kit. But uh, one of the cool things about the BNR is it also maintains the use of the bracket and you can even uh, reuse the heat shield and everything so uh, it's a great turbo factory appearance but packs a punch all right so we've got all the lines back on the new turbo we've got the bracket we've got the heat shield on it's ready to go back in the car and we're gonna start installing everything now All right, so we just got the manifold tightened back up and the oil and the uh, turbo tightened to the manifold. We installed the oil feed line, so everything's connected to the turbo. We now just have to connect all the lines from the turbo to their appropriate places on the engine. Oil return, coolant return, coolant feed. We also have to reconnect the boost controller and all that stuff to the wastegate and the boost source on the turbo. And then we'll be starting to put the intake back in and get everything buttoned up. All right guys, we got her all buttoned back up. Now it's time to load on the base map and get this thing back on the road to making power.